Hey guys, I just wanted to quickly run you through the assignment that you're going to be doing this week. I know some of you are a little bit more familiar with Illustrator than others, and this is just going to give you a step-by-step. -step. So if you follow this video, you should be able to do this assignment regardless of how well you do or do not know how to use Illustrator. So before you get started, you should have already done the Pinterest assignment um, for week five and have created a board for warm colors and a board for cool colors. If you've already done that, it's actually going to be really helpful for this portion of the assignment. So the first thing we'll do is you're going to go ahead and open up your file that was available for you to download. Um, if it is an AI file, all you have to do is double click it and it's going to open up in Illustrator. So you can see here um, you have the original artboard that has all the elements that you're going to be changing the colors of, and then you're going to three additional artboards one for cool colors, one for warm colors, and one for analogous colors. Um, we're going to start by creating our color palettes. And if you look below the original artboard, here are all the colors that are used in these infographic elements. You'll see that you have these additional darker colors down here. That is what creates the shading on these ribbon elements. Let me zoom in so you can really see what's happening here. Here's the main color of the board, this orange. But then in order to create the illusion of depth, you have two oranges that are a little bit darker than the original orange. And that is what is creating these additional colors. So you're going to need to create shades of your colors to create these ribbons. And if you did the reading, shade is just, you're just basically adding black to a color. So you're just, you're making it darker by adding a little bit more black. And I am going to show you how to do that. So how to find color palettes. There are a couple um, there are a couple of ways you could do this. Actually, there are a lot of different ways you can do it, but I'm going to show you two ways that you can do it today. The first is I'm going to go ahead and open up um, a tab in Chrome, and I'm going to go to the website, blurs.co. So you go here and Pretty much you can just search for color palettes. It's, it's so easy. Um, if I just hit this explore button, the first thing that's going to come up, again, a bunch of trending color palettes um, over here in the top right hand color. You can also search by maybe like what's the most popular. Um, we're not going to do that today. But those are great ways to search or something. If you have no idea where you want to start or where you want to go with something, sort of, you know, see what's on trend, see what's happening out there. And, and if something catches your eye, um, start working with that color palette and see what you can create. But we're going to go ahead and start by just really simply typing in the word cool and see what comes up. And you can see it is all these different, um, color palettes that fall on the cool range of the color spectrum. Um, so just, you know, look through, find something that you really like. I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to go ahead and choose, kind of, I don't want to choose one that has too many of the same colors in it, even though you can, you can do that. Like that, that would totally work and you could make that work for this assignment. Um, I also want to be careful not to choose one that maybe has too many colors in it because it um, 
you can eliminate the extra ones that you don't need, but it, you know, it, it might be a little bit more challenging. Let's go ahead and let's choose this one. Um, you have these three little dots here. And if I click on those, I can actually export the palette. So if I hit export the palette, I can either download it as a PDF, I can download it as an image, um, and I could also download it as an SVG, and that is actually a vector file. So if I choose to download it as a vector file, then I can open it up in Illustrator, and I can just pull it over into our already working file. And oh, it's under downloads. Okay, so I need to actually go into my finder. I need to go into downloads. You can see my color palette is right here. I'm going to go ahead and open it up with Illustrator. And it's going to open it up into a different, um, it's, a, it's an entirely different file. What I should have actually started with, guys, step one, because we haven't done anything yet, so it's okay. But step one should have been me saving the file. So let's go ahead and we're going to save this and we're going to save it by changing the word template to your name. So I'm going to highlight template and then I would type in Amy Graham and then just hit save. Okay. And now it is saved. And now it is saved as your name. So I actually know whose belongs to whose when I start downloading these and checking out what you guys have done. So going back to my cool color palette, if I just take my selection tool, holding it down, pull this sort of rectangle over all the colors, then Command C will copy those. I'm going to bring them over. I'm going to click sort of just if you notice like my mouse, I'm sort of like clicking right below the cool colors artboard and then command B. There's my color palette. So you can actually now each of these is an individual rectangle so I can separate these out if I want to and decide what is going to belong to what if that makes sense. So um, maybe the, the blue one, I am going to go ahead and match up with the blue. If you don't want these, by the way, if you don't want these to be rectangles, you can actually make them into squares. Might make it easier. So the blue will be the blue. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this. green and I'm going to make that my replacement for the green. Then I'm going to do the purple is going to be my replacement for the, well, it's not really red, it's, it's a, kind of like a dark fuchsia. And then this lighter purple is going to be my replacement for the orange. Now, because you do have this sort of background that is muted, I'm going to play with this green and I'm going to make it a little bit lighter so that it will work for my background. So you can see, like, I have this green highlighted here. I'm going to um, come over right hand side, make sure that you um, are working with the Essentials Classic version. Um, I'm going to click on my color guide, and if I click on this green color, you can see that I can actually change the tint. And again, I just mentioned shades. Shades are when you're adding black to a color. A tint is when you're adding white to a color. So I can make that color, you can see, I can, I can, re, I can change the tint of it. Like, I'm actually gonna go ahead and take it all the way down to 
It's almost white. It's not white, but it's almost white. So here is my main cool color palette. Don't forget, I need these shades of these four top colors. So if I get, if I take my selection tool and I draw a rectangle around these four colors, click and hold down, I can press Option and Shift. I'm gonna pull over until I have it where I want it to be, let go of my mouse. Then you can let go of the Option and Shift. So we're gonna do that one more time. Again, with my selection tool, I'm going to draw around the colors I want. I'm going to press anywhere on these four squares, hold down with my mouse, do not let go, press Option and Shift at the same time, pull them over until I have them where I want them to be, let go of the mouse, then let, let go of Option and Shift. Okay. Now let's go ahead and play with the shade a little bit. This, um, I'm going to click on the middle one. Like you sort of you have the original color. I'm going to go a little bit darker and then a little bit darker still. So I click on this blue. Instead of using the color guide, I'm actually going to go into where it sort of looks like a painter's palette. And I'm going to press um, where it says color. Here, the K, because you, you should be working in CMYK. This is how it should have opened for you. So the K stands for black. And if I just pull this over a little bit, it becomes a little bit darker. It's just really that easy. So I'm going to move over to the next one. And you're going to make that one a little bit darker than the one before. And there you go. It may not be quite dark enough. So I might play with it until you have it where you want it to be. So I'm going to repeat the same thing where I'm going to pull the K over just a little bit. And you're going to want to pull the K over just a little bit more than you did on the one before it. Just You're just going to keep repeating this. And you can see how it's changing on your board. So really look at it and like, okay, like that's where I want it to be. There's no exact way. Again, these um, these different these um, additional shades are really are to to sort of create that illusion of depth. So there's no perfect right answer here. Just by making it a little bit darker, whenever you're working, especially with a flat graphic, that's going to do the trick for you. make that a little bit darker and there you go I feel like so there is my cool color palette so now I am going to create a warm color palette I'm going to go back into Chrome I'm going to go ahead and get rid of where it says cool and I'm going to type in warm So lots of different options come up. And again, any of these, as long as they really are, if if they look a little bit more neutral, because so some of these are a little bit more neutral, probably those are not going to work. And if you're not getting what you want, there are other things you can look for. Like you could look for um, a red color palette, your reds, your oranges. Um, and see what you get there. So instead of getting a color palette from this website, I'm actually going to show you another place to get a color palette from. You can either search for it here in Chrome, and you're gonna be looking up Adobe Colors, um, which I think it's just, you can see, actually, obviously I've been here. Um, Adobe Color, Adobe Color. So if you just Google Adobe Color, you'll find it. But another place you should be able to find it is here at the top. You should have this little symbol that is 
for your all your Adobe stuff, your Adobe um, suite. And if I click on that, it's going to open up this window. And I'm going to want, as I'm already there because I, I use this all the time, I'm going to want to click web because this is a web app, unlike uh, Illustrator, which you would be using on your desktop, your, um, your font choices, your stock choices, your, um, your color searching, like that's often on the web. So click web. And then down here, Adobe Color, hit launch. And it opened it up on another screen, so I'm just gonna pull it over. And here we are at Adobe Color. So lots of, this is, what's great about using the, um, the Adobe function is that you can save things directly to your libraries in your program. So if I'm creating, say, a series of documents that are all going to be using the same color palette. This is great because then I just have this saved permanently like in my library. So it's the same sort of thing. You see create, explore, trends, you know, seeing what people are using. It's great if you really have no idea where you want to start. This is a great place to start. Today we're going to hit explore. Now what's really interesting is we found our cool color palette somewhere else, but this is what is, um, Adobe kind of has their own sort of color. You know, I think that they tie it to the Pantone, but color of the year, oh, they are tying it to Pantone, even though this is um, no longer 2020, so blue is no longer the color of the year. We're gonna learn a little bit more about what the Pantone colors of the year are um, in the next week. So if I go ahead and in the search bar, I can press warm and we'll see what comes up. Lots of warm color palettes, except you'll see like this one, mostly warm with a blue. So be careful that whatever you're choosing is actually a warm color palette. If it has cool elements in it, that's okay, just don't use those. Like you can you can pull down more than one more than one option if you want to. Um I don't hate this one. So I'm gonna open this one up. And again, there are multiple ways to save this. Um if you want to save it as a JPEG, you can do that because you can see that it actually has um, your hex codes in here, which you can type into Illustrator, which I can show you how to do. Um, and I can also just add it to my library. So I'm gonna add this to my library, which means that it is now accessible to me in Illustrator. But I'm going to show you if you just, even if you just on a piece of paper wanted to write down these hex codes, I'm going to show you where you would find that. So we'll go back into Illustrator um, before I dig into my library and pull my warm color palette over. Um, we are in CMYK right now. If you have, again, like the painter's palette color option open, and I call these like the little three, like the little hamburger, if you open it up, and there's one that says web safe RGB. And if you hit that, this is where you would put in your hex code. So any hex code in here, you'll be able to find the, the, um, the color you want. Because it, this is a CMYK um, file, meaning like you would, maybe you're, you're working on this for a print purpose, you would want to switch it back to CMYK once you get your color in there. But I'm going to go ahead and put that back, close that. Just here to the right, you'll see um, this little icon that looks like it has like a little bookmark. Those are your libraries. And for some reason, oh, I must have clicked it twice. So here is, here's my color palette. This is, um, this is the one that I pulled over. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing I did when I pulled these over. I'm going to 
draw using my selection tool. I'm going to draw my rectangle around it, press down with my mouse, option, shift, pull it all the way over, let go with the mouse, let, let go, option, shift. So let's, I'm going to work my way up this way, I think. Um, I'm going to make this purple the pink. I'm going to make this purple this orange. I'm going to make this green um, this sort of yellow orange, cut the color of a California poppy. And then I'm going to make this blue um, this sort of mustardy yellow. Actually, no, I'm going to go ahead and make it this bright yellow because then I'm going to come down here to what should be my uh, my more muted color. It's my background color. And I'm going to go ahead and make that the mustard for now. So two little arrows, press, close my library. Um, go back to my, again, I have my mustard highlighted. I'm going to come up to my color guide. I'm going to click that yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a tint. I'm going to choose, I'm going to go one a little darker. So that's going to be my background. And just like I did with the cool color palette, I'm going to take these four main colors. I'm going to pull them over, option, shift, let go, option, shift, let go. Go over to my color tool, pull the black over a little bit. Repeat this a little bit more. Just a little bit darker. And one more. Um, no, that's not enough. I think it needs to be a little bit more. Put my black over. Put my black over a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Do the same thing with the pink, a very bright fuchsia this time, or magenta. And there we go. That is my warm color palette. Okay, so now that we have our cool colors and our warm colors, it's time to create our analogous color palette. And this one, we're gonna go ahead and do actually right inside Illustrator. So I'm gonna go over and choose the rectangle tool. Then come up to the top. Um, actually, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna choose the color again that's like the little painter's palette. And I can just choose any color in here any color that you want to choose um, we're just we're, we're starting with one color so really this is this is where you have freedom to pick whatever whatever you would like so I'm gonna start with this blue um, if I hold down the shift key as I start to draw my rectangle it will draw a perfect square let go of the mouse, let go of the shift key, and this is the first color we're going to start with. This blue. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. With the rectangle selected, now I'm going to go up here on the right hand side to your color guide and make sure again that the base color is correct. And then this little arrow over here, if I click on this, I have a lot of choices in terms of different color palettes I can create. Um, analogous is actually already chosen. And you can see here, I have all the colors ready to go. Actually, even more than we probably need. So I'm gonna go ahead and create more rectangles. Um, you can either just copy and paste these, or if I have it selected, click on the box with my mouse, do not let go, 
pull down the Option key, the Shift key, pull the box down, let go of the mouse, then let go of Option and Shift. And let's go ahead and do that um, three more times so we have the right number of boxes that we need to create our palette. So again, hold the mouse, Option, Shift, Pull, we have five boxes. So if I click the second one, I just come over here to this color palette that's already been created for me and click inside that box. Select the next box and just keep repeating it. This last one we're going to want to be lighter. Again, it's our background color. So I'm going to choose this sort of minty green and I'm going to play with that. Looking at this color palette, it totally works, but I may not want it to be this monochromatic. So maybe I will take this darker purple and I'll make it into this green. So this background color, which it, you, you can do, I mean, it could, be, it could totally work to have a background color that dark. It may or not may not work, but if, if I go ahead and make sure that that's my base color, and then again, come over here and I can play with the tint. And you can see that lightened it up. Again, it's not, it looks white, but if I pull it up, it's really, really not white. And just as we did over here, I'm gonna pull these top four colors over. Click with my mouse, Option Shift, pull them over. Click with my mouse, Option Shift, pull them over. And this is where we go back up to color and we just increase the black slightly. However far over you think it needs to go, be careful not to take it too far because, um, and these are just to, it's to, just to create the illusion of a shadow. And there we go. Okay, so now we have all three of our color palettes. And now we get to start changing the colors of our infographic elements. So in order to do that, we're going to use the same method where we are um, using the option shift key. I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. Um, the first way is just to simply, using your selection tool, draw your rectangle around your box, come up to edit, come up to copy. Then if you take your mouse and click inside the artboard that you want to paste this, if I go up to edit, I want to choose paste in place. If I do that, it's going to put it exactly where it was and the artboard that I copied it from. So now we can just go to each artboard and repeat. Again, click inside the artboard you want it, go up to edit, paste in place. Click inside the artboard you want it, go up to edit, paste in place. And we could have done the same thing that we did with these different color palettes. I could have um, used my selection tool, draw my rectangle around it, pull down with my mouse, press option shift and pull it over. But the paste in place is a little bit easier. So just go ahead and do that. Okay, so now let's start changing colors. If you only have 
one board and you need to change all the colors in your entire document, one really easy trick is to click on the color you want to change. So let's say we want to change this blue color. You can come up, once you've selected one, you can go up to select, same, fill color, and it is going to grab every single version of that blue in the entire document. But because each of these boards needs to be different colors, that's going to be a little bit more confusing, so we don't want to do that. So in order to keep track of what you're changing, you probably want to just go down the line. So I'm just going to literally, with each one, I'm going to go down the line of these colors and change them as I go. You could even, if you wanted to, pull these color palettes over next to the, the new palettes so you know what matches up with what. So again, using my selection tool, draw my little rectangle around these squares, hold down with my mouse, option shift, and go ahead and Pull that over, hold down with my mouse, option shift, pull it over, hold down with my mouse, option shift, pull it over. Now we can easily zoom in on each one and not forget what color is supposed to be what color. So let's start with the cool color palette. The first thing we want to do is we want to select all the colors on this color palette that are this blue. So if I hold down the shift key and then I take my mouse and I just click each blue on the board, now all the blues are selected. Then I'm going to come over here to the eyedropper tool click on the eyedropper tool, and click inside the square that should be the new color. And now it's changed. So come up to your selection tool, click anywhere outside of your artboard, and now we're going to select all the greens. Holding down the shift key, green, 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 green each one. Over to your eyedropper tool and select the new color. Choose your selection tool again. Click anywhere outside. Basically, that's just deselecting everything, so you're starting fresh. Now we're going to select all the plum colors. Holding down the shift key, each element that is that plum color. Your eyedropper tool. New color. Back up to your selection tool. Deselect. Now each of the oranges. Holding down the shift key. Every single element that's orange. Your eyedropper tool. And there's your new color. And back to your selection tool. Deselect. Let's go ahead and change the background, your eyedropper, and the new background color. So now what we have left are these portions of the ribbon that are those um, various shades of the main color. So if I hit Command, Plus, I can zoom in a little bit to see what we have here. Okay, so we'll start, we'll just go top to bottom. Now that you've changed the main portion of the ribbon, it's really easy to see which shades you should be using. So this is sort of our darker purple. Um, the end of the ribbon is your medium color. So I'm going to select that portion, go over to my eyedropper and then choose the medium. 
hit my selection tool. Now I want to get that little triangle eyedropper tool, darker color. Go back up to my selection tool and now I'm going to repeat it with each of these colors. The end of the ribbon, eyedropper tool, medium color, selection tool, a tiny little triangle, eyedropper, the darker color. Selection tool, end of the ribbon, your eyedropper tool, and since it's the blue, it's your medium color. Selection tool, tiny little triangle, eyedropper, darker color. That one actually really didn't change very much, did it? Your selection tool, the end of the ribbon, your medium color, selection tool, tiny little triangle, and the darker color. If for some reason you choose the wrong color, if you accidentally say like you hit something and you accidentally pull it out, it's okay. Just Command Z, undo. And you can hit Command Z several, several times um, if you've made a couple of mistakes in a row. But there you go. Now all of the colors in our cool color palette have been changed. So let's go ahead and repeat this process here with the warm colors. So first we're gonna start with, actually, you know, this time I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go from bottom to top because we have all these oranges and I think it's gonna get confusing as we go. So first let's start with just changing the background color, which is just the sort of cream, your eyedropper tool, and select. I'm looking at that now and I'm thinking that's gonna probably be too dark. So let's change that before I get any further along. And if I, Come over to my color guide, make sure that's my base color. Uh, yeah, I think that's gonna, that's actually gonna work better. Okay, so now we're gonna choose, we're gonna work off all the oranges. And again, we're working, this time I'm working top to bottom. Um, depending on what color palette you end up with, you may not have to do this. I'm just realizing I have a lot of oranges in this color palette and I don't want it to be confusing as I'm trying to choose them. So holding down the shift key, orange, 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 orange. Each of the oranges. Go over to my eyedropper tool and the orange corresponds with this bright pink. And I'm gonna change it. Back to my selection tool, deselect. Now I'm going to pick all the plum. Hold down the shift key. Each time the plum color appears on the board, over to my eyedropper tool, the plum corresponds to this orange. I'm gonna change it. Selection tool, deselect. Now let's find all the greens. So hold down the shift key, click each element that's this green. Eyedropper tool, and that green corresponds with this sort of um, yellow orange color. Like, actually, like, I really like this color palette with the blue in it. I mean, the blue technically is a cool color, but um, yeah, I, I, I could see using this color palette, but we're going to go ahead and change the blue. Selection tool, deselect. Now we're gonna pick all the blues out, hold down the shift key, and click all the blue elements. Go over to my eyedropper tool, and click into this sort of very bright yellow color. Selection tool, 
deselect. Now all I have left to do is to change all these ribbons. And again, we're gonna do it just like we did in the one before. Starting at the top, the end of the ribbon, the eyedropper, this is the sort of the darker orange, choosing the medium color. Selection tool, get that little triangle, eyedropper, the darkest version of that. Now we're working with the hot pink, which is the end of the ribbon. It's going to be that medium color, selection tool, the little triangle, and the darker color. Selection tool, now we're working with this bright yellow, the end of the ribbon. Choose the medium. Back to your selection tool, a tiny little triangle, and the darker version. And now we're doing the sort of the yellow, orange, or the orange yellow. The end of the ribbon, which is that medium color. Selection tool, tiny little triangle, and the darker. And now you can see. We have changed all the colors in our warm color palette. Now, for the third time, repeat this process with your analogous color palette. And yours, I mean, all of your color palettes are gonna look different than mine. You're gonna find a different warm color palette. You're gonna find a different cool color palette. Um, really, this, this color palette in particular is gonna be completely based on whatever color you start with. So let's start with our first color, the blue, holding down the shift key. That's each blue. Go over to my eyedropper, change your color. Now let's choose all the greens. Actually, don't forget, deselect and hold down your shift key. Click each green. eyedropper tool, change the color. Come back over to your selection tool, click anywhere outside, deselect. Now we're going to choose the, the sort of plum color. Again, right where we are now, like just by changing those two colors, we have completely changed the feel of this color palette. And I really like this color palette, the way it looks. Like I, I like the, the orange and the plum with these two blues, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and keep, keep changing them as we go. So hold down the shift key. Choose all the plums, go down to your selection, or I'm sorry, go down to your eyedropper tool and change it to the corresponding color. And the orange one is the last one to do. See the, choose your selection tool. Click anywhere outside to deselect. Hold down the shift key. Choose all of your oranges. Back to your eyedropper tool. And change the color. Selection tool, deselect. So now we are changing our ribbons. This is the sort of lavender color we have in this color palette. So the end of the ribbon, your eyedropper, that medium color, your selection tool, tiny little triangle, your eyedropper tool, the darker color, your selection tool. Now we're now doing the, the green. So the end of the ribbon, your eyedropper tool, that medium color, your selection tool, tiny little triangle, back to your eyedropper tool and that darker color. So selection tool, this is the sort of lighter blue color, the end of the ribbon, your eyedropper tool, and it's that medium color, 
and then get your little triangle and choose the darker color. And the last one, which is the darker blue, choose the end of the ribbon, eyedropper tool, medium, your little triangle, and your darker color. So the only thing we have left to change is the background color on this. So just click anywhere and that whole background will get chosen. Your eyedropper tool and then that lighter color that you create. And we've changed every color. So deselect. If I zoom out, which is command minus, you can see we now have four artboards with all of the exact same shapes and elements on it, but they all have a completely different feel because they all are completely different color palettes. Um, so that's your, your simple how-to and, you know, have a lot of fun picking out your colors as you go. And again, anytime you accidentally move something or you make a mistake, Command Z is your friend, just undo it and start over.